I'm here at the Lister House. This was the headquarters of General George Gordon Meade, commander of the Union Army of the Potomac, during the three days of the battle. It's a small two-room house. It was owned by a widow uh, who left as the shelling began on July 1st and uh, did not return until after the battle. And so finding the house vacant, George Meade established his headquarters here right in the center of the Union line. Now, what's interesting about George Meade is that he was a Corps commander up until June 28th. On the night of June 28th, near Frederick, Maryland, about 30, 40 miles from here, a rider came in in the middle of the night, about three o'clock in the morning, a messenger from Washington, and came to General Meade's tent and said, I have come to bring you trouble. And Meade thought he was going to be arrested for some infraction but actually he was being given command of the Army of the Potomac. Command that he took over just three days before the greatest battle ever on American soil. Imagine being George Gordon Meade and having that responsibility thrust upon you. But if you read the history of George Gordon Meade's actions here at Gettysburg, you'll see that he was someone who went about his task meticulously. He said, I didn't want this command, it was thrust upon me but it's an order and as a soldier, I obey it. And he went about making the transition, learning where his troops were. And by all accounts, he fought the battle brilliantly here during those three days. He was criticized afterwards for not pursuing the Confederates as they retreated back toward the Potomac River and Virginia. But there's a lot of reasons why that really wasn't going to happen. It's easy to have critique when you're far away in Washington and not actually on the ground. I find George Gordon Meade to be a fascinating figure because here's someone who has this responsibility thrust upon him, didn't ask for it, and yet he goes about his duty with great resilience. It's a lesson for me, I think, that sometimes, again, things are thrust upon us we're not ready for. We suddenly become responsible. We might be responsible for a company, might be responsible for some kind of ministry. Maybe you've suddenly become responsible for an aging parent or a child who is in need or a spouse. Whatever it is, there's an opportunity for us in the midst of that. We can sulk, we can refuse the opportunity, we can shrink in front of it. Or like George Gordon Mead, we can take it on. We can learn where things are and learn how to succeed in spite of the difficulty. I love the lessons of George Gordon Mead. We're going to talk more about that kind of resilience, that ability to move forward in shifting circumstances.